The Astros eliminated the Yankees on a walk-off win, and the World Series begins tonight. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Baseball. It was a brief hiatus with no games, but the World Series is starting tonight, so we thought today was the best day to get the recap of the ALCS in and the preview of the World Series. We're back in Adam. As you know, Jake and I are Yankees fans, so we got our hearts broken. We got a little sadness. We got to figure it out, but we're back. Thank you for hanging around with us. We appreciate it. My name's John Boy, obviously, and I got Jake sitting next to me. And we got a bunch of patrons that are bringing you this show. Jake, how are you doing today? Great, Jim. Couldn't be better. Here to talk some basketball and some football. Um, you know, it's it's the those seasons are taking off. I'm ready to go. They are underway. Football season's like halfway through, man. It's crazy. Yeah, week week seven just happened. It's the quickest season ever. Yeah. This isn't a football podcast. No, it's not. It's a baseball podcast, and it's uh, I'm I'm good. I think uh, you know, not to spoil too much, might might lose some Nationals friends, but I'm uh, I'm excited. We got good talent, good teams, baseball. Hashtag Abron. How are you? Baseball. I'm good. I'm I'm doing well. Uh, needed. I took like Saturday and just did straight date day with Katie, which was really fun. And then yesterday, or no, that was Sunday. Yesterday got into a little, but got back to the work grind. These hockey breakdowns are kind of fun. Hopefully, we get some breakdowns for baseball from the World Series. Um, I'm fine, man. Like on on, and we'll get into. Uh, our emotions as like Yankees fans a little bit because we have to talk about that game six. But first, let's do the patrons. We have six, seven new patrons sponsoring this show. They are Tom Shortridge. Sounds like an English name to me, but I like it a lot. Nicholas R. Kimball. Malik. Malik. That's cool. That's cool. Call up my, uh, I was going to make the corniest joke. I got a leak in my house. So I call up my landlord and say, we got Mo leaks. That's a plus material. I don't even think that joke gets to corniness. I think that's coming in below corniness. What, what's below corniness? Just like terribleness. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was bad. Yeah. Threw it out there yeah. saying it was bad. Alex Monroe, Brian Bastanza, Bastanza. Lucas, you got a Luke, no last name, last name omitted, so it must be an MLB player. Lucas, yeah, I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if it's Duda or Giolito. Ooh, give me Duda. Yeah, you think so? I was no leaning. Duda doesn't listen to podcasts. Giolito fits the market a little more, but I, I don't know. I was leaning Duda. Duda doesn't listen to podcasts. I'm picturing him tuning in and be like talking baseball. You think they mentioned me? Giolito, oh, Lucas Duda. I think no. Giolito's doing that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the young guy. He's throwing it in. I, I see Duda being like, yeah. Well, while, we, while we're on the topic of Lucas Giolito, uh, after the World yeah. Series, we we have to do our podcast on, like, awards, you know? Yeah. Lucas Giolito being nominated for Comeback Player of the Year is nonsense, and I want to get yeah. into that. Yeah, I saw that going around the other day because, yeah, he didn't, he didn't really come back. Oh, well, there's a conversation there, but that's for another. Well, yeah, we'll do that on the next episode. And then the last one is Jamie, which is Garcia. Jaime? Yeah, I think it could be Jaime. I don't know if he officially retired, but uh, either way, we thank him. Okay, well. Barria? What team is he on? Is he on the Nats? No. Uh, he's on the Angels, so, yeah. A couple options there, too. Thanks, Jamie. We appreciate it. Those are most recent Patreon sponsors, patreon.com slash Media. All right. Game six. Do you have a burn? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. This is awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of people saying you were such a professional. Like, I had people in, in the, did you see these in the YouTube comments? Like, Jake's a professional. He'll burn it, like, because I didn't want, I didn't do a real breakdown. Yeah. That was funny. Props to you. You're a professional. Not a heart. 
My that Altuve breakdown I did is probably one of the funnier ones. It it blew up on Twitter. <laughs> like I yeah. didn't think it would. <laughs> and then we had some people that were honestly we upset workshopped. about it. We, yeah, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, we were doing talking Yanks, and I had four options. It was do don't do. What was option option one was don't make a breakdown of Altuve's home run and just have comments come in nonstop of people telling me like I'm biased, which obviously option two was to do a breakdown with a, uh, an ad with no talking. And option three was to do a breakdown uh, as a, as a brand new Astros fan, which was a little rude. Yeah. We landed in the right place, but I, there's still like people that don't get it. And they're just like, think like they're calling me a, a sore loser. Yeah. Which like what's that quote? Show me, show me a happy loot, a happy loser, and I'll. It's like show me a happy loser, and I'll show you a loser. Isn't there a quote like that? Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen that tattoo on my back. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, before we go into Jake's magnificent burn, which should be wild, let's throw it to an ad or two. All right, fantastic. Here we go. Jake, on your mark, get set, and burn. We're going, going back, back to Houston as it's game six bullpen day. Chad Swag Green versus the Astros and Brad as they try to peacock their way into the World Series. Bottom one, it's not easy being green. You lay, you lie. Guriel turns on a fastball, uh, into the Crawford seats. It's 3 nothing. Stroh's top two. Are you the one they call Sanchez? RBI single for Gary. It's 3-1. to one. Top four, Gio Urshela, Ella, Ella, A, A. He goes solo, Dolo, 3-2 Houston after four. Alex Bregman shows the fortitude to make the score. 4-2 to two after an RBI ground out. It stayed that way into the ninth. Osuna in for the save, but he is just a man against a machine. DJ LeMahieu, La Machina, goes two-run homer. We're tied at fours. Go crazy. Araldis Chapman in to send it to extras, but Houston wanted to play the song one more time. Jose Altuve, Jose Altuve, hang him and bang him as Houston walks it off to go to the World Series 6-4 final. Kind of a crazy game. If you're, you know, we like to we like to think about how a third party fan would enjoy that game. And I think a majority of third party fans are actually rooting for the Astros because everyone hates the Yankees. And I think like the baseball world got a treat of a game. 29 fan bases probably enjoyed that thoroughly. Drama, a comeback, a walk-off, a walk-off to go to the World Series. Like, there was a lot going on. Yeah, I think Houston's starting to get some, some, a little bit of hate just because they've already won one. Um, they do come off as a little bit arrogant and nerdy, which is a bad combo uh, for a lot of people, but... The, the the Yanks are the Yanks. And yeah, it, it was a great game and it was I I mean exciting times and I'm I'm gonna step away from the third party fan for a minute because I, I think it's it's fun to look at it through the Yankee scope because there there was some crazy stuff going on there. I mean it all series, neither of these teams could hit. I mean that's that's kind of the dirty secret that's getting swept under the rug a little bit. But DJ LeMayhew finally gets that big swing that the Yankees had been looking for all series. And there were so many I've, I've mentioned on here that I'm a big storyline guy. And, you know, I think Houston was undefeated this year when they were up two runs or more. And they went up three runs in this game. Um, you know, the, the Yankees were down three games to one. It, it felt like that LeMahieu swing was going to be the, like, oh, shoot, Houston might have their back against the wall game seven. Yeah, they got Cole, but they're going to have all the pressure on the world on them. Um, and then just like that, about 10 minutes later, uh, it was gone. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it was a good game. It was, um, I mean, the bullpen day game six, 
Um, and a lot of the arms that went out there and fought the good fight, I mean, for the Yankees, my word, um, Jay Happ out there <laughs> fighting the good fight after Yankee fans had kicked him to the curb in what, August? Um, it, yeah, it was, it was a great game. It was a good series. I think it was the best two teams. Cue the Nats fans starting to get mad. Um, Houston, Houston rolled. They, uh, the Astros were going to win. You know, because even when DJ hit that home run, I was so excited. And then I was live on Periscope, but I told you this already. Like, once the Yankees didn't score again and it was a tied game, I, I, it like crushed me before it even happened. Where I, uh, sorry, lost Jake for a second. Crushed me before it even happened, where I was like, oh shit, if the Yankees don't take the lead here. Houston can walk off to go to the World Series. And neither pen has anyone left. And it just felt like, oh, shit, this is scary. And, uh, yeah. I mean, the Yankees brought in Araldus Chapman. Um, yes, but, 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 uh, and then, yeah, but I'm just telling you my honest feelings. And then, and then the Yankees pen is gassed when, Chapman was getting into deep counts, and when Springer walked and he was at, like, 20 pitches, I was like, well, what the fuck now? Because even if he gets Altuve here, like, he was our plan for two innings. So that was shitty. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then They would have had to push him, but it doesn't become a factor. Yes, but then I'm thinking, well, then we have game seven. We just taxed Britain entirely, Chapman entirely. Like, you know what I mean? Like, things weren't adding up for the Yankees, even after the DJ Homer in my brain. Yeah, but I mean, it was the empty the tank series. This is, I, I mean, it's one of those feelings. Those guys would have been there for tomorrow because um, yeah. you have to be. It's, yeah. it's the end of the season, but uh, that <laughs> wasn't an issue either way. Um, Chapman hangs one to Altuve. Altuve just absolutely smokes it. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's Altuve's a special, special little booger. Wish I could like him even more because he's like my exact same dimensions if I dropped 15 pounds. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's great for them that the Houston, all the videos from around the stadium, how nuts that place was going. That's really cool, uh, to, to be at that game. And if you're Yankee fans, I, I think, uh, you know, the pitch count was up, but Marinzik was on deck. He got put in as a defensive replacement for Brantley. Um, the catch 22 there is you'd, you'd put Springer on second that a single falls. Um, you, you know, I, I went, I went through some of the analytic stuff, and they were saying basically Altuve being up with Springer on first um, is almost – it's a coin flip between having a runner on second with Marisnik up. <laughs> like the, that Altuve was the same amount of dangerous. And I don't know. It hurts going down to that guy when you've got another guy on deck. Like that. Yeah, I would have pitched Altuve uh, because um, I wouldn't have wanted to lose to like a bloop single by Marisnik. Like, I'm happier. And I, it's just a bad pitch. I mean, he couldn't locate his yeah. fastball, Chapman. And then Altuve was swinging through his shoes, and you put a slider in the zone. I mean, I, I was calling for a slider in the dirt live. So they didn't go with my call, which is... Yeah, that's which ignorant is, uh, by them. Yeah, just listen to me next time, please. Don't put a slider in the zone. He's clearly swinging. They, li they didn't listen to me either. I said, go get Marisnik, but... It's, uh, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, Yankee fans were, were obviously shook as every fan base is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to overhype that too much, but this, this felt like the Yankees year. They had the upstart 2017. Uh, they come back last year and, and the Red Sox are just magical. And it, it felt like this was the Yankees year. Um, you know, they were doing everything despite all the injuries, um, they rolled the twins and they were, this was going to be the redemption series against Houston. And, uh, no, they, uh, you know, I think game two and game six are going to haunt the Yankees for, uh, for a good amount of time. Yeah. I think, you know, Astros fans are saying that it felt like our year to us. Right. Um, but I mean, they, like they've, I mean, they won. They've, they've won. Still. That's, yeah. Still can be their year. Did you see the stats that the Yankees out hit them and out pitch them in every statistical category? But that's like why stats don't always matter. Like the Yankees right. had a higher batting average. They had a higher on base percentage. They had a higher slugging percentage. They had a higher OPS. They had a higher batting average 
with runners in scoring position. They had a uh, better starters ERA and a better relievers ERA. Yeah, I mean, nuts? all that gets you, – you just have to take game one out of the equation for that because the Yankees won game one 7 nothing, and then the rest were really tight games. Yeah, but it it is still like when I saw that yeah. graphic, I was like, wait, what? It's crazy. Yeah, and it's it's just crazy, and it's it's something I might dig into this offseason, but teams that do come close, um, you know, there's a certain amount of luck that comes into the playoffs. I, I'm not saying this was all luck by Houston. They're an incredible team. Um, but it, it's, it's funny that, you know, people are going to question the Yankees starting pitching, the hitting, the bullpen, um, when, you know, they were in game two, they were – a walk and a bloop away from winning that game. That was the game that went into 11 innings. Um, and then, I mean, in game six, you know, the, the, the whole series could be changed. So yeah. it's, um, it's, it's great for Houston. They're going on. Yankees fans are going to have a lot of questions already. The, the Francisco Lindor rumors are flying for Yankee fans. Oh, um, shut up. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. like Kluber last year. Yeah. Don't, I hate, I hate off-season rumor mill. No, well, you didn't think they'd trade Bauer, but uh, more of the issue is uh, paying the Kings ransom that would come with Lindor. The Yanks aren't going to do that and might not even have that, but that's going to be another story for the offseason. Well, the interesting tidbit before we move on is that Zach Britton came out and had some very, very yeah. telling quotes, uh, basically like, Starting pitching wins championships. I was gassed. I'm not a starter. I'm a reliever. I can't pitch that much. And that's not how, like, you need starting pitching. And this World Series includes the two highest paid top three pitchers in baseball. Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, Cole, Granke, Verlander. The, the, they are the most paid pitchers. And you have to pay for starting pitching. And the Yankees, I think, and I was blind to this somewhat, for a while, like the Yankees have to kind of reevaluate because they like their big bullpens and the big bullpen's great during the course of 162. It's really, really good. But when you need to rely on them every day in the postseason, it's you need to you need to have those big guns and, and Severino being hurt and not fully like Severino stretched out hurts and all that. But props to the Astros for you know, making the moves for Verlander, Cole, and Granke. Do you have a, here's what's something that I might Astros fans might find interesting, Jake. Do you have a player on the Astros you don't like? Because I, I going into this series, I couldn't tell you a player I liked or didn't like. Oh, I I could tell you players I liked. I, like Altuve is so fun. Uh, right. Bregman at third base. It's, they got a lot of likable players. I think. Do you have any coming away that you're like, eh, that doesn't do anything for me? Yeah, I mean, Gurriel and Osuna, but that's kind of for off-the-field stuff. Um, but I came away yeah, Correa. No. Correa, boo. Uh, Correa's got a little bit of a... Like that, Lame. That geeky, Lame. That geeky analytic thing that I kind of talked about, like, you know, the the Apex Predator thing. Like that, that's yeah. That's like a really weird comeback. That's, oh, my God. That's, that's so... You're you're in the high school cafeteria and someone comes back and says, "Hey, bro, I'm the apex predator." And you're like, "Cool, you know man. what? You know what? Killer boots. I, that's a great. I and 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 I like and I'm people. Ash friends are gonna get upset because I like all your other players, but Correa is lame. Like every video I saw and quote I saw just was high school cafeteria badass shit talk. It's like what, dude? You're Propose lame. after the game. Yeah, it all adds up. It really does. And that video of him lifting in the gym and doing like blue steel to the camera, but not unironically. So anyway, there you go. There's my shit talk. There you go. Yeah. Flush it out of the system. And yeah, but circling back on the, the Yankees bullpen. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, they clearly built their team that way. Um, go, building by the bullpen. So when someone like Britain, who they paid to come into town and had an incredible year and incredible postseason, um, yeah, it, it makes you wonder. And, yet, I mean, you just can second-guess everything. That game one where Tanaka was cruising, and, you know, we we kind of gave them claps for going to the bullpen and said that's the plan. Um, you know, maybe do you let bull- Tanaka empty the tank and potentially save that bullpen and rest them for a game? It, it changes the whole mindset of the Yankees going forward. Yeah, that for that game one, though, Boone did come out and say Tanaka, like, 
was gassed and asked to come out. It was like, I have nothing left. Yeah, well, <laughs> could any of the bullpen guys say that to Bone? <laughs> no, they were used to death. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Exactly. And it's eye-opening. All right, anything else? Astros win. Really cool moment for them. Like, walk off to go to the World Series against Chapman. A- Astros crazy. win. The, the only thing that I, I think is really important, and that people are going to think I'm saying this in a negative light, is that the look at the pitch that Yuli Gurriel hit out of the park off Chad Green. Chad it's, Green. That's one of the better fastballs in baseball, uh, just like spin rate wise. I mean, miles per hour, everything. It was about six inches in off the plate. Guriel just turns on it. A guy who was in a one for 20 slump. And it's like, well, that's baseball for you right there. Yeah, that that was crazy that he hit that pitch out. I feel bad for Chad because yeah. it was it was like it's the unhittable pitch. Really? Yeah. He turn, puts it over the into the seats. The other news coming out of this, Jake, and I don't know how much we want to touch on this, but I feel like we should mention it, is that the Astros' assistant to the GM, Taubman or whatever his name is, yeah, uh, supposedly, uh, well, the reporters are saying that he looked at the female reporters and screamed, I'm so fucking glad we got Asuna. I'm so fucking glad we got Asuna. Um, and if you don't know, Asuna got suspended and in trouble for domestic abuse to his then mother of his child and girlfriend. And like, this was a big deal, obviously, because if you, if, if you did that, and I don't know why a group of reporters would lie about this. Like there's a lot of people saying, no, this happened. So I don't know why they would lie. Um, then fuck that guy (laughs) basically. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see pictures um, of him? He's like a young, like nerdy, like MIT grad. It's like, uh, well, this is just passing judgment to, for no reason, yeah. so I'm just going to stop. But it sucks, and then the Astros' response to it kind of was really shitty. Yeah, they uh, they kind of blindly defended him, and then all the media was like, no, this happened, and it was really bad. Um, and yeah, it's just... Um, it, unless there's a missing part of the story that nobody knows about yet, it's uh, it seems awful, because he's yelling, thank God we got Osuna in the faces of women. And it's after the game, Osuna blew the game. So he was the worst player in the series for them. It, it it doesn't add up at all. So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I don't know. If you're Houston, uh, I don't I don't know what you do. I mean, I, you, you kind of, if this is all real, you have to take care of that guy. And, I, I mean, I'd do it before the World Series because I wouldn't want that to be a story during the World Series. This is supposed to be your team's shining moment. And now you're going to have the story be that. Yeah. Shitty. The, the, and it, the, it brings Houston, in, Houston came out and just flat denied it right away when like, Hey, we're looking into this and, and going to cons- like, you know, uh, handle it internally. I mean, people still would have been like, okay, but it's better than straight up just denying it when more people have come out and said, no, it happened. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You'd, you'd like to think Houston's going to take care of it. I don't know. Um, and, yeah, I mean, just this is an FYI to Houston fans. I, I'm not saying this as a dig, but as someone who received tweets about the 98 Yankees teams taking steroids the other day, um, people are going to run with this against your Houston team. They'll be like, yeah, you guys have analytics and great players, but, you know, Yuli Gurriel has the – has has his thing. Osuna has his thing. And now you have a guy in the front office. So they're gonna say, Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just warning you that if you don't nip this dude in the butt, people are gonna be all over you guys for years saying like, Oh, well yeah, you let anyone come play there. I mean they already had like been fined for cheating for hacking other databases. Yeah, but I'm talking like person wise. Like no. you Oh no, I'm just saying offensive. there's a stack of things coming up. Like oh, yeah. you, the Warriors turned heel in the NBA. If they if the Astros win this World Series, you become the heel, not the darling. I think officially, especially with all these. I, I the, think they're already there. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. I mean, as Yankee fans, who cares? Be the heel. That's that's the fun part of winning. Sometimes. Uh, the other thing that someone just brought up in the in the chat, Scott Timmis, uh, people talking about Chapman smiling after giving up the home run. Get out of my face with that. It's clearly a yeah. shield because he's just so surprised and like taken back and has, doesn't know how to react. If anyone thinks he's actually happy, you're just you're just so dumb. Yeah. Honestly, like I don't want to sugarcoat it. If you look at that and you're like, look at Chapman, he was happy they lost. You honestly 
are a dumb person that just doesn't know how human interaction and human beings work. So I'll get out of my face with that. If you've never had that, I can't believe it smile on your face before. Then you're the you're the weird person here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there was something else. The other point I wanted to make is for Yankees fans who are saying like analytics don't work and we can't rely on the home run. Well, we just got beat by the most analytical team in the MLB, unapologetically the most analytical team in MLB, and they beat us by using the home run. So maybe one, maybe one of the few. Like maybe the only more analytical team than us. Yeah, and they and they beat us because they didn't hit better than us, but they hit home runs better than us. So, so that's kind of all the annoying storylines going on. Let's move on to the fun stuff. And if you're a Nationals fan, you've kind of been waiting for this. And Nationals fans probably. Let's move on to um, the World Series preview. Quick break, and then we'll get there. All right, World Series, the main stage, Jake. Nationals versus Astros. If you thought about this matchup when 2000 and like 10, would it have been a big joke? Five years ago, been like, what? But that is kind of cool. Two powerhouse starting pitch, starting pitching lineups that got to set them exactly how they want for game one. Scherzer versus Cole. Get some people on the main stage. Obviously, the Astros have been on the main stage before. The world kind of knows who Jose Altuve is. The world knows who Justin Verlander is. I think the world's going to get introduced to Garrett Cole on a different level. And on the on the national side, the world is going to get introduced to Juan Soto. Like, you have the pitchers and you have some other players. Juan Soto is going to dominate the talk that's my not on field prediction, just kind of like media coverage. Like the first time he does that Soto shuffle and he's staring pitchers down, all the casual fans who are coming just to, ch- to watch the World Series for the first time, we're going to be like, what is that guy doing? I think he's going to become a star. Yeah. I mean, the, the Soto 20 stuff, obviously, the, the internet's already run away with that, but it, it's, you know, it's going to be in the big one and more people are going to see it. And, you know, people are going to hear for the first time that he's 20 and see the shuffle and the stare down and the licking and all that. Uh, Daddy likes that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think the other, another theme that's going to be here is the third baseman. It's Rendon and Bregman. Um, that That's going to be a theme. And then it's it's the starting pitching. It's the, it's the most talented starting pitching that's ever been in a World Series. It's the highest paid starting pitching in the league. Um, I mean, that's, that's what it's all going to yeah, it's uh, it's starting pitching versus starting pitching. I mean the the Nationals. I'm I'm interested to see how the Nationals are going to handle their pen and how much Strasburg, Cole, and Corbin are going to throw out of the pen on their throw days. Like these guys are starters and relievers. They don't. I don't think they're going to have side bullpen sessions. I think they're going to have their bullpen sessions in the World Series. Yeah, I I don't know. I I think Scherzer, Scherzer. And um, Strasburg, I don't think they're going to do that. I, I think Corbin they are. I think they've already said that for the first two games, Corbin will be available. Um, I, I think mid-series, like, you just believe in those guys so much that you would, you would do that for game seven. Um, well, if their back's against the wall early. Yeah, in, in like a game six or something, yeah. But I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think those guys are... They, they believe in those guys. And, like, I, I don't know. Think We're not going to say H- Houston wouldn't use Verlander or Cole. Um, well, they didn't already. I mean, they used Scherzer and Corbin out of the pen in the DS and the, and the CS. Like, that's right. done been and, happening. And Corbin will be used. And then in that in that game five, um, they, they went to him. But, yeah, I, I, I don't think mid-series um, – yeah, I, I don't think they can. I, I don't think I, – I think they'd rather use bullpen and not run the risk of, I, I mean, burning those guys out earlier. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I thought – didn't Scherzer already do it not in game five? He did it in – oh, it was game five of the NLDS. Yeah, they're, they're not going to do that till the end with those guys. Yeah, I don't know. Their bullpen sucks. Yeah, and I think that's – 
we'll 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 talk about it a little bit. But yeah, I mean they're they're going to ask a ton out of Scherzer, Strasburg, and Corbin and Anibal Sanchez. Um, and right now they have three they believe in. They they have Doolittle, they have Hudson, and they they're going to try out Rainey. Um, he's kind of the X factor to see if they can get an extra inning out of their bullpen. Yeah, Rainey. He's been good since that first outing. But I have that yeah. first outing stuck in my head. What about uh, Rodney? Oh, Rodney's going to get some. Rodney's going to get some probably big at bats. I think. And that's- I think. I think Rodney's also going to stand out in casual viewers' mind. Like, who's that guy? <laughs> Does he not care? This is the World one Series. One of these things. One of these things is not like the other. Um, he's forty-two. Um, no, I mean, you're going to see some of these guys in big at bats. Uh, think about all the pitchers we saw in the Yankees and Houston series. I mean, we saw a bullpen day from Houston. Um, it, we, we are going to see the depths of these bullpen and I don't think Washington's going to be able to hide it just by, even if they do try to work in throw days and stuff, which I, if I'm Scherzer and I'm Strasburg, I believe I, I can win my man up starts that I don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, so you, so you, I, I don't know. You have the Astros winning this handily, right? Yeah, I mean, Houston is the biggest favorite in Vegas since the Red Sox in 07 versus the Rockies. Um, I, I think a lot of the hype that we're seeing right now is kind of being fabricated by baseball people. Because um, I don't know. I think I, I did this with the Nats and the Cardinals. And again, Nats fans... You enjoyed me for the past week. I think you're going to not enjoy me for the next week. If you just go around these teams, Houston's better. Um, yep. and, and it's it's it, the people in Vegas aren't doing it with opinions. <laughs> they they do it with money on the line and stats, facts, data, and information. And I, I don't know. Like, if you just go, okay, what infield do you like better? What outfield do you like better? What bullpen do you like better? The starting pitching, there's a conversation to be had there, but I mean, I think I'd still lean the Houston dudes just because really? they've been there. What about oh, just because they've been there? Because I think you'd take Corbin over Granky. Uh, I personally would, yeah, but I think I think I and this is now we're starting to split hairs with the pitching staff, so I I don't want these to be taken as like I'm I'm taking Cole over Scherzer all day, uh, because it's baseball and that's why it's a beautiful sport. But I think. For one game this year, would you rather have Garrett Cole or Max Scherzer? Right now, Garrett Cole. Right. He, and that's not a shot at Max Scherzer. He's one of the no. best pitchers of this generation. But Cole has had one of the most incredible years we've ever seen, <laughs> ever. In, in his worst start, he went six innings pitch, zero earned runs. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he's he got a 15-strikeout performance this playoff. Um you know, Scherzer got hit a little bit in a couple of his starts. He's bounced back to be better. Um, and then, like, okay, so what if I said one game? You want Verlander or Strasburg in the World Series? That's a toss-up because Stras- Verlander has had, like, a couple games now where he's vulnerable at times, and if you attack him at that time, you can beat him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean – the the one run the Yanks got off of him in in his first start was just the one mistake. It was the judge. Two well, there's two two run homer, but I mean he, he let someone on base before that, and then right. there were some other mistakes in that game that the Yankees didn't. I mean there there's a conversation there, and I've been a Strasburg defender from the start of this playoffs when we were calling him the asterisk, Mister Four Starts. Um, his playoff numbers are incredible, and he's he's another guy who. Uh, I think he can become a story of this postseason in this World Series because Strasburg was the big name. He was on Sports Illustrated and stuff like that before he made it to the major leagues. He kind of got forgotten in the like Bryce Harper world and then overshadowed by Scherzer. He could have a serious bounce back, and maybe that'll be part of Washington's theme if they do it. But I don't know. Gun to your head. Would you rather go down with Verlander or Strasburg? Verlander because he's been there before, but that's that's like like you said, that's picking hairs. Like, that's, right again, it's, hairs. it's it's pulling straws, and then you know, hey, I'll I'll give you Corbin over Grinky, um, even though that's a discussion in and of itself. Um, They're really good. The, the lineups favor the Astros, but the Astros haven't been hitting at all. 
Yeah, I mean, you wonder, Gurriel, he wasn't hitting. He gets that one swing, and now he's, you know, is he back on track? Does that get him going? Um, you know, Jordan Alvarez was a guy that was a black hole for him. They've kind of got their decision to be easier because in, in the National League games, they'll just bench him because he's normally their DH. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think wherever I, I think it's going to be landing, closer. I think it, I think it'd be a good series or I think the individual games will be good. That's what I'm hoping. Like, even if even if the Astros win in four, win in five, I hope the individual games are close and there's not like, you know, blowouts like and in in that. I did kind of think about the pattern of the Cardinals scoring big in the uh, first inning versus the Braves of game five and then getting beat in the same manner in the, their elimination game and then the Nationals sweeping and then getting swept and just the pattern there. And that would suck. I hope this isn't a sweep. I don't think it will be. No. I think I think the Nats are going to win one or two games. I think it goes Yeah, six. I think we're going five or six, but I, I think – I think it's Houston. I think, um, I, I mean, the bullpens, and that's that's what might be funny about this. I mean, I think with all this talk about starting pitching, I think the bullpen is are going to decide this series because I think the starting pitchers are going to do their job because that's all they know. And I, I just think the Washington Nationals in the regular season literally had the worst bullpen. And these guys are going to have to come in for big at bats against big dudes against Houston. I mean, the Nationals, they have two impact bats, and they're special Soto and Rendon. I mean, Howie Kendrick's having an incredible postseason, but he's still Howie Kendrick to a degree, you know? I, I, I don't want that to be a slap in the face, but I don't think Howie can. Like, anytime Soto or Rendon comes up against. Cole, Verlander, Grinky, like those are must watch. Like that's going to be awesome. And those hitters can win those at bats if they make a mistake. And unless Howie Kendrick proves me wrong in the first two games, I mean Cole and Verlander, th- those guys have the advantage on him. I'm rooting for Howie. I'm rooting for oh, Baby yeah. Shark. You get I some think Baby I'm Shark for the Nationals. <laughs> you get some Baby Shark going and wearing. You know what's going to suck? Both these teams' fan bases use rally towels. Rally towels suck. Ooh. I hate those things. No one oh. claps because they got a towel in their hand, so it's quieter. And you're just waving a towel, and that's kind of lame. Clap. Make noise. I hate good rally optics. towels. It's good opti- optics for a camera, but it's not like good. I hate rally towels. Yeah. Clap because you want to clap. Like, just... It's, uh, it's like high school. It really weirds me out that they use them at a professional game. Anyway, that's just me being cranky. So I am excited for the na- the Nationals fan, that old man Nationals fan who has yeah, a sign. Yeah, that's true. I'm rooting for him. Rooting for that guy really hard. Wears the glasses, always has a sign, looks like the old balls dude from Billy Madison or uh, Big Daddy. <laughs> Five-year plan guy. What is it? Not die? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so game one is uh, Cole versus Scherzer. Cole actually has a history versus the Nationals because he was in that he was in the NL for a while. Whereas Pirates. the yeah the Na- the Nationals don't really ha- or the uh, Astros don't really have a history versus Scherzer. There's not a lot there, but Rendon has 15 at bats, um, and that's really all. But he's got really good numbers versus Cole. 467 on base percentage, 385 batting average. Obviously, this is pre Astros yeah. analytics, pine tar call. So, a little different. But, how do you see this game going out, playing out, game one? I mean, it, it should be an absolute duel. It should be a feast for baseball fans. Um, if you are like a casual, casual fan, it might be a bad time because, I mean, you could see. You could see what the combined thirty strikeouts in this game easily. Yeah. Um, so that's up to I, the announcers uh, to let let the viewers know like how cool that is. Right. Um, but if you're at a bar or something, I don't know. I I think um, if you are the Nats, this is I'm not saying must win, but you you'd like to get this one if you could get Cole and Scherzer, and that's if the Nationals do do this, it's 
Uh, I mean, there's some good storylines there. You know, I'm a storyline guy. Uh, the District of Champions. The Nationals don't have a World Series. Um, I don't think that franchise does technically since like 1924 when they were the Generals or something like that. Um, Max Scherzer, he's 35 years old. He's had an incredible career. Three Cy Young, seven times All-Star. This is probably his best chance to win a World Series. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if those guys can to turn in special performances – I mean, that's what makes baseball a great sport. Like, they, they could do this easily. Um, you know, it, maybe their starting pitching is does take it a step up from Houston's and, and they take over. Um, uh, I don't know. Game one, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no reason to not expect these two dudes to be just special. They do not have a World Series in their history. No. The Royals, the Montreal Royals were revived in 1928 and purchased by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1939 to serve as their triple A affiliate. Holy shit. Imagine being a professional club and you get purchased by another professional club to become a minor league club. <laughs> That's tough. Wait, wait, but we're professionals. No, your minor league players actually. Sorry about that. You're now in our farm system. <laughs> That's a really tough break. Get a pay raise. They won seven international league championships and three junior world series when they went to the minor leagues because they were a professional team that got moved to the minor league. So they just dominated. Dude, that's really shitty. Yeah. Jackie Robinson played for the Montreal Royals and led the team to a junior world series title. Damn. Jeez. And then, uh, yeah, but no, no thing. I didn't think about it. You think there's baseball fans in Montreal that are, like, you know, they stayed true to the Nationals and are like, is there like if they did one of those ESPN graphic maps and it was like, yes, who who thinks the Nash, who who do you think will win? Every state in America has the Astros, but then Washington, D.C., the DMV area has the everyone has the Astros. The Washington DMV area has the Nationals. And then there's a little blip in Montreal that also has the Nationals. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think because you have to think about it like this. If you were a Nationals fan and you're a big baseball fan and your team just moved to a different town, you're still going to root for them because it's 90% the same guys and that was your team. Um, there's definitely a group up there that absolutely hates them because yeah. they left their town. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there, it's a little bit of a catch-22 there. Um, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. If, if they get the... the the district of champions behind them and they're they're motivated to get their first one and a couple standout performances why not washington but i think uh just looking at it on paper i mean if you if you <laughs> a lot of ways you break it down i mean houston's the better team i will say there's another fun thing to kind of equate during this series we talked about jordan alvarez who's supposed to be I, I think he technically had like the third highest OPS if you if you make his games eligible as like Trout, someone else, and him. Um, Jordan Alvarez struggled immensely so far this playoffs. On the other side of the spectrum, the guy who you might see DH, um, or maybe you'll see him at first base, but Ryan Zimmerman, the old man for the Nats. I mean, he's he's I'm looking at their team page right now, and he's technically like fifth all time in WAR for the Nationals. He's the best Nationals player of all time. And they have old old man Zimmerman versus young Jordan Alvarez on the other side of the ball. That that might be fun to see how those how those two dudes react to the World Series. That'd be cool. The old guys. The oldest team. I wish the Astros were the youngest team. That would be a fun storyline. Yeah. Dude, uh, I got lost on on Wikipedia. The Nationals, when they were in Montreal, played at Jerry Park Stadium. And the bullpen was on top of the dugout. So like it was one pitcher standing on top of the dugout right in front of the crowd's faces. They're basically pitching on a catwalk. How bizarre is that? There's a cool picture of it. If you just search Jerry Park or whatever it was called. It's called Jerry Park Stadium. Was Park his last name? Because that's a confusing... To have it be named after Jerry Park, but then you have Stadium, so it's like Park Stadium. Jerry Park Park, Jerry Park yeah. Stadium. Yeah, you know what I mean? Interesting. All right. I think that ends this episode. 
We will be back tomorrow. We're actually, if you're a patron and you want to watch live, we're going to be recording tonight right after the game because I'm going to New York City tomorrow morning to apartment hunt. So we will be live tonight. Everyone else, it'll be on the, the apps and all that shit tomorrow morning. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for sticking with us through our brief hiatus. But uh, enjoy the World Series. If you like baseball, tell someone to watch it with you. Grow, grow the game, they say. Grow the game. Grow the game. I'm rooting for the Nationals game one. I'm rooting for the Nats. I don't care who wins. Just one close games, but Nats game one.